As we discovered last time, Musashi Manufacturing is up to no good, and it's time for Kanoko to go beat an answer out of them. Let's watch. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Musashi Heavy Manufacturing Concern. How can I be of service? Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Agent Thorsh. We are with the TCTF, and we hereby order you to cease and desist all operations. We have reason to suspect that this facility is involved in the manufacture of illegal technology. Of course, officer. I'm sure I can get someone to help you. They're here, finally! Is everything ready? You know it. They are getting out of here alive. Let me know when things start to get messy. Count on it. When I get through with them, they're... Just make sure I'm not interrupted. There may be someone with them. An exceptional agent. I'm ready for anything. You made sure of that. There is always someone stronger. Have you forgotten? No. I haven't. I'll be careful. See that you are. You know the consequences of failure. Please have a seat. Someone will be right with you. What the? Heads up, we've got company. That Whoa. woman's got a serious death wish. She just set herself up in a vicious crossfire with her smack dab in the middle. Luckily for her, the TCTF tries to avoid collateral damage, and these syndicate thugs aren't going to last very long in the crosshairs of the Agent Kanoko. Seems my partner here took the final guard down by himself, which is always somewhat surprising. AI friendlies aren't bad, per se, they're just rarely in a situation that doesn't involve them being vastly overwhelmed. In this room, we find another civilian worker, or that, for some reason, thinks he can take down a crazed TCTF agent, despite the path of bodies we created to get here. There's more ballistic ammo, and it gives us a good chunk of additional ammunition already. Only has two types of ammo, rather than a specific type for each weapon. Red is ballistic ammo and is used for the more conventional weapons. Green is energy ammo and used for guns like the plasma rifle or the Van de Graaff gun. I'll try to give a good showcase of both, but for now we're stuck with ballistic. Another two shockingly violent factory workers go down in a flurry of tiny, vicious fists. And we can mash some buttons on a keyboard until a door opens up. That, for some reason, teaches us how to do a haymaker uppercut. This is a simple attack, adding to our punch combo, and will become part of our general repertoire. You'll be seeing it often. As for the second door we opened, there's another worker in there that drops a hypo, but I really don't think we'll be needing it. That console gives us a quick explanation of the Deadly Brain Project, which involved using a human brain, preferably combat train, to command and control a series of automated weapons. Apparently they were using a subsidiary company to collect the brains from injured and dying soldiers. The TCTF proceeded to wipe out the initial phase of that project. And it sounds like I distracted myself enough to allow someone to escape and set off an alarm. Doesn't make all that much of a difference, just creates a more target-rich environment. This is a wild goose chase. Explain. This whole place, it's a trap. They planted that data pad. To what end? It's a diversion. It, it has to be. The Syndicate is going to try something big while my team and I are busy here. I'll try to confirm your suspicions. Until then, your orders are unchanged. Find something we can use to shut them down. Yes, sir. I'm not sure where Kanoko pulled that from. I'm not really seeing any less resistance than usual here. Still, she usually knows what she's talking about. While Commander Griffin sniffs about, we'll keep introducing Syndicate members to the solid end of the long arm of the law. I'm sure you're all getting bored with the starter pistol, so let's go ahead and switch it out for the submachine gun we've been seeing scattered about lately. The Hughes Black Adder SMG has a 30 round clip and a very rapid rate of fire, but the accuracy leaves much to be desired. Up close and personal, it can wreck an enemy what good, but they can easily sidestep the auto-aim feature, making leading difficult. Release the uh, single soldier with a rifle. That's not really as intimidating as it's supposed to be, I think. Speaking of single soldiers, this fellow in here is busy beating on a scientist for no apparent reason. As far as I know, these scientists are working directly for the Syndicate. I suppose they must be trying to silence witnesses at this point. Uh, 
Take this ammo clip, it'll help you. Further confusing, why was she carrying an ammo clip and no weapon to use it in? This situation could have been resolved before I arrived if she'd been packing heat. Incoming compass data. Well, uh, that was a less successful barrage of SMG bullets. I know a few of you wanted to see the backbreaker in action, so there you go. Show me what you got! Seems like the deadly brain prototype suffered from a complete inability to tell friend from foe, much like Kanoko here, but more readily dangerous. That's probably what happens when you steal someone's brain and then give it to the tools to get revenge on you. I mean, that's just asking for trouble. We're back in the reception area, but the second floor is now unlocked, and a quick sprint will bring us across to it. Looks like we've left the office behind and entered the loading docks. I don't like the looks of that weapon, and uh, we'll just alleviate him of the burden. me hurt you! As you can see, enemies are fully capable of recovering dropped weapons, which can be very dangerous if you give them the opportunity to pick up some of the more deadly later guns in the game. As for this one, it looks scary, but ultimately isn't that dangerous. Still, I'd rather not give this guy the chance to test that theory. Another broken back, another dead dock worker, and Kanoko continues to completely throw the rules of engagement and law enforcement directly out the window. Syndicate forces are attacking a research facility ten minutes from your current position. Get out of there, fast. I sent another team, but they're gonna need your help. I'm on it. Kanoko's wizardry properly identified a trap, but we can't very well just leave through the front doors we just passed, right? Now we're at the max amount of hypo sprays that we can carry, so if I'm going to keep picking them up, I'm going to have to start burning a few. This next room contains one of the more difficult mechanics of the game, requiring Kanoko to dodge a series of moving lasers. They don't do any damage on their own, but tripping the laser causes the automated energy rifle in the far wall to start firing. Best to avoid that if we can. been going for a backbreaker there and failing miserably, but she didn't hear that from me. This bit of text lets us know that the deadly brains sometimes have some bugs involved in transitioning from, you know, limbs to guns. Apparently they tended to adapt pretty quickly. I guess when guns are all you have, everything looks like a target. That semi-hidden console disables the lasers that are keeping us from proceeding, so we'll head back up to the room we entered from to hit that console. Pardon me, Kanoko. What is it? I used a wideband theta scan to locate the control mechanism that was used to activate the facility's defenses. I'm detecting a biomechanical expert system with a full suite of interface overrides and intrusion countermeasures. A deadly brain? I thought we tracked down the last of them. Apparently Murrell found one we missed, or manufactured one of his own. If you disable the device, we should be able to take control of the security system and clear a path to the nearest exit. Finally, some good news. Where is it? Deadly brain? Why, we had no warning at all that there'd be one of those here. Time to run the gauntlet one more time. It looks like I tripped that last laser, so the energy rifle opens up. It's the same as the rifle that we can find, so it's unpleasant, but not a death sentence, particularly with us so close to the door. Hey, hey, come here! Look, take this hypo. Well, that makes a little more sense than random ballistic ammo, I suppose. 
Now, that door is on the same side we're currently on, so no more laser jumping. The Q button is mapped to both holstering and unholstering your weapon, as well as picking up items on the ground, hence why you tend to see me whipping my gun out whenever I try to pick up a hypo. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the SMG for obvious reasons, but it did soften up the tan soldier for me. Looks like the deadly brain was unexpectedly turned on, how incredibly unsurprising, and killed a few of the scientists working on it. Meanwhile, once more through the lasers. That is one tough scientist. to activate it. It will kill us all. Run while you still can. Why did you build it in the first place? Well, uh, you know. Forget it. Just get out of here. Here! Ah! They built it because science, Kanoko. Don't question it. New mission data. out of the Musashi intranet and is trying to gain access to the local TCTF public security node. Turn off those breakers, fast! That console tells us to trigger the overrides to disable the brain, and as suggested in the thread, I'm going to enable subtitles for this fight. I'm not sure how visible they'll be, but failing all else, I'll put some notifications up after I upload. This fight is relatively straightforward. The Deadly Brain doesn't have eyes, only sensors, and by dodge, duck, dive, dip, and dodging our way through the lasers, we can disable him without a problem. Unfortunately, the Brain's subconscious is attempting to crash the public news net. Something about the glory of instant celebrity. Oh, it's unleashing a torrent of digital images of itself! Stop it! Now if we trip any of the lasers, the deadly brain will start hurling everything he has at us, including ballistic munitions and a type of weapon called a screen cannon that we'll see more of later. We shouldn't be seeing any of that now, however, as I think I can manage not to be seen by the brain. The first sequence was a simple dodging pattern, and the second is just about the speed of our regular jog. You must have decoupled its core logic on that final pass. The brain tells me it will irradiate everything within a 50 block radius unless we meet the following demands. It wants feet. Clearly, it's gone rampant, but its Zyax destruct mechanism is extremely powerful. Complete the final sequence and shut that brain off for good! Now this third and final pass is at the same speed as our sprint, which can be tricky. We have to time things just right and use the proper angle to get from console to console. Looks like somebody has a terrible case of brain freeze.
How is she holding up? Well, according to Shinatama, her deodin latency has crept up to 29, but her bioplasmic waveforms are holding. So she's still stable? And so far as we can tell, yes, but prolonged stress could be dangerous. She insisted. And this is why I was against moving to phase three. We have no right to put that in. I'm getting tired of listening to your self-righteous tirades. Kanoko is as much your creature as she is mine. 